I'm Professor Takata. I teach uh, computer science at Hamlin University, and I thought I'd just put together a short little video, maybe give you some reasons why you might think about taking a program class, taking something in computer science. So what I have here, I have this triangle, and I'll tell you why I've set something up like this. First of all, I might I have to explain the labels here. What I have is I have three corners, and one of the corners I've labeled CS, computer science, inherent things about computer science. Here I have the world, and what I mean is how the world views computer science and how it uses it. And then I have in this corner, I have you. I have placed you in there. And this is the thing that I know the least about, but I want to say a little bit how all these things relate, how you might think about taking a computer science course because of that. Uh, let's first of all talk about, um, let's talk about CS itself. Um, CS is, is a great field, is challenging. Is challenging, there is a particular learning curve at the beginning when you're taking a programming course because you have to be precise, uh, the amount of precision involved in the way you write the code and then you compile it. Um, beyond that also you need to be precise in, your, in the way you construct a procedure and the way you put together an algorithm. Um, and we can talk a little bit about some of these other things in a bit, but let's, let's go back, let's go to this right here and then I, will, I want to talk about you. Talk about how the external world perceives computer science. Well, this What's been happening for several decades, and it's going to continue happening, is that it's an expanding field. There are a lot of jobs in, in computer science. Um, and this, why might this be of interest to you? Well, actually, this goes to one thing. In order to get a college degree, a lot of times you have to acquire a fair amount of student debt. Uh, computer science is one of those areas that can help you pay off that debt rapidly. And that can give you all sorts of freedom that you otherwise might not have. Let's actually talk in specific about, about money. Uh, median starting salaries for people with a computer science degree. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, so I just have this here. If you want to search for this, you can. Just say Wall Street Journal, median starting salaries by major. They're listing it, and this is several years ago, so it's gone up since then, at $55,900. $55, That's a median starting salary. And you can go around and take a look at other places as well. What about job growth? Well, okay, BLS, by, by the way, here stands for Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's put out by the U.S. government. And I'm saying over the next, let's say, these, this decade from 2014 to 2024. It, there are different areas in computer science, but it's about 20%. There's so many things that are going to be, uh, require programming, yeah. robots, automation. Uh, so this, this is, a, this is a, um, a developing market here. Let's actually also talk about some other things. Um, actually, no, I'm going to talk about you, and then I'm going to get to these other two things here, because this really relates. These particular things may concern, it all depends upon what your, what your thoughts about this. Let's talk about you. Now, the things I've talked about here about CS and the world, these are, I would say, fairly objective things. This is what CS is. This is how the world perceives it. This is the part that's more subjective. and. Uh, and what I would say is this, when I'm talking about you, do you like problem solving? Do you like writing code? Well, as far as the writing code, you're not going to know until you start writing code. And again, that's one of the reasons why I recommend you take, take a computer science class and see what you think about it, whether you, whether you like doing it. But if you like problem solving, my guess is that you will also like writing code as well. You have to also, one thing I would emphasize is that you need a certain amount of patience. You need a certain amount of patience, not just with a problem, but also with yourself when you're working through um, something. I'm going to say something else here about this you as opposed to the world and CS. Those things I know, you know what the inherent nature of CS in the world is. I have been teaching computer science for quite a number of years, and the one thing I have given up on trying to predict is who's going to like programming and who's not going to quite like programming so much. I, I can never tell. And so, again, my recommendation, based upon a number of things, is this. Give it a try. Try, try, a, try an introductory program class. And actually, I've got stuff listed up there. I'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, let's do this, because the last two bullet points I had there, they might be particularly relevant to you, depending upon your situation. So you might, you might think about that in your decision-making process. What have I got? I've got uh, tele telecommute. One of the nice things about programming, I'm sure you probably already know, but I'm just emphasizing it here, 
is that because of its inherent nature, it has possibilities that allow for telecommuting. So you have a job, and you may not have to be specifically in an office in order to do stuff. You could work remotely. How is that important, and how could that be helpful for you? Again, it all depends upon what your biography is and what you want to end up doing. If you're a caregiver, for example, you're taking care of your parents, or you're taking care of your grandparents, or you have, have a family, or you want to start a family, or you want to take care of your children, there are many options here with telecommuting, particular to CX. There, there are many more options, I would say. Uh, what else could, could I say about, um, about the way CS is structured? You can use it to support other interests. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more in another video of how you can support um, certain interests with it. But let, let's say this. There are many, many fields, and I'll just talk right hand, like econ and sociology, political science. I'm sure I'm going to forget some here. Uh, physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, all these different areas, they use computers in some way. So if you want to do certain types of projects, let's say you want to look at a whole bunch of data, big data, you do it using computer skills and using computers. Okay, so you can use this to support those other interests. I mean, you, you might sort of think, well, why should I take a computer course if I don't want to be a computer science major? First of all, I would say, you don't know whether you want to be a computer science major until, in fact, you do. Try it. But even if you don't do that, there are all sorts of ways, and I've had many students in the past who, for example, they major in psychology, they've majored in music, and in history, in physics, in chemistry, and they end up taking these skills and use it to help themselves be more productive in those other areas. Um, let's actually talk, I want to go back to the other two bullet points there. So before I do that, I just mentioned this, in one sense, is how these two corners of the triangle interact. You, what are your particular goals? It might be that these will end up helping you out in particular. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about, I, I was talking about the inherent nature of computer science, why it's challenging. It's not, it, it takes work. It take, what I would say is it takes work and it takes patience. And uh, it also takes, you have to like solving problems and be willing to spend time trying to solve problems. Um, but why, why is it challenging? Well, part of it is, I just told you this particular bullet point, but I want to talk about these two things. There's something extremely fundamental about, about computer science. Um, you've got the universe, and you've also got two things. You've got how we can perceive the universe with what we have, and also what we can compute. So computer science has to do with that last section there. What can be computed? What can be computed? What's a relation? We have two resources. One of them is space, and the other one is time. How do these two things interact? And maybe I can say a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, let me actually give you, uh, and we'll have another video on this, but there are two really important problems. By the way, this, this kind of stuff comes from the world. This comes from all sorts of jobs here. One of them is called vertex cover. And the other is called the traveling salesperson problem. These two things are very closely related in a rather unusual way. Uh, but maybe we'll, I'll leave that, I'll leave a fuller discussion of that for, for later. Anyways, let me just wrap up for a bit. Oh, uh, one thing I also want to mention is this. Here at Hamlin, what courses could you take in computer science? Well, this is the intro course, 1250. That's followed by data structures. And then the math course that's most closely connected with this is 3440, is discrete math. Okay. So those are the courses that we end up having. Uh, think about this. Think about the how, what computer science is inherently, how the world sees it, and what you think about what you, what you are, and how all this stuff might fit in. And I encourage you to, if you have any questions, of course, come and you can email me, come and talk to me. I'm around. So earlier I said that you could use computer science to support other interests. Well, I mean, the obvious examples of this, let's say you're in econ or sociology, political science, physics, chemistry, mathematics, did I leave anything out? But there are a whole bunch of different fields. And you need to do some data analysis, you need to write a program, because a lot of the information there is in these big data sets. CS comes to the rescue, right? 
That's one way you could use, the obvious way in which you could use CS to support your interest. But there's another way. I just want to mention it because we got access to this. This is a nine foot uh, grand piano. And uh, if you notice here, what I've got is I've got two keyboards. It's pretty obvious. I've got, this is a gen generic laptop and I have this instrument. This thing, by the way, weighs about 1,200 pounds or so. So for, you can probably guess why I put this keyboard on top of this other keyboard. If I did it the other way around, I wouldn't have a laptop anymore. Sometimes the physical world gives you a nice metaphor for what's going on, and sometimes it doesn't. And this is actually an example in which it doesn't. It is true, physically, this keyboard, this grand piano is supporting this other keyboard, this laptop. But in terms of my biography and my life, it's really the other way around. This stuff is CS, and this is what has given me the freedom the latitude and, and the money also as well to be able to do stuff with this keyboard. Um, and as I said, we got access to this thing, so I don't want to I don't want to miss this opportunity. Um, I want to actually okay. This is not going to be stuff about CS. So let me talk about this. You know, you've got Duke Ellington. I listen to Duke Ellington a lot, and you got Rogers and Hart. They're both great. Um, but I don't know whether people have quite seen the connections between the two. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a little bit of one, a little bit of the other, and then just put them together, mash them both together, and see, see what you happen to think. Again, this is not CS, but it is CS in the sense that the, all this stuff is supported by this, at least in my life. Here's a Duke Ellington piece, not that well known. Reflections in D. Here's a tune uh, by Rogers and Hart. It is pretty well known. It's used in lots of movies. I think it's really similar. So we got these two pieces. I think, you know, something about the melody line. Put these two things together. I'm going to start with the Duke Ellington and I go into Rogers' heart and then I end up with the Duke Ellington. 